I'm Indre. Indre, nice to meet you. Hi, Andrea, I'm Randall. Randall, please come in. He was just fascinated with airplanes from the time he was in a baby, even in a car seat in the back of the car. Right. But I think the first thing that he really did, he had just turned two, and we were passing by a store that had little bins outside with toy trucks and toy planes and things. So I thought, well, if I stop and buy him a toy, it'll buy me a half hour in the towel store. So I took it out of the packaging, and I gave it to him. And I said, oh, look, there's a little bomb on the bottom of it. And he goes, that's not a bomb, Mama. That's a drop tank. No. That really surprised me. From that point on, it's just like everything started happening. Within a couple weeks, he started having the nightmares. He just woke up one night screaming like someone was murdering him. I came flying down the hallway in his room, and he was laying on his back with his feet, and he was like kicking his feet and his hands up at the ceiling, like he was in a box trying to kick the lid off of it. Mm. He just kept having this, the same nightmare. Then it was about three months, two months into it, it was just another night he was having one, and I just stopped dead in my tracks, and then he was saying, airplane crash on fire, little man can't get out. It still gives me goosebumps, because I'm just like, is that what he's been dreaming all this time? I'd start talking to my mom about it at that point, and she's the one who said maybe he's remembering a past life. I don't know what made her come up with it, but when she said it, it seemed very plausible to me. I politely said BS. It's one of those glaringly ignorant statements people can make when they don't know what's really happening. And then he started to relay other things. Of what happened to your airplane that got shot? Who shot your airplane? The Japanese. Well, how do you know it was Japanese? He said the big red sun. Like, what kind of airplane was it? A Corsair. Corsair. Tell me about where your airplane came from. He said it came from a boat. Did your boat have a name? And he said Natoma. So I went into my office and Googled the word Natoma. You had never out. heard it before? Nope, and they're about hit 400, and there was a history of a World War II aircraft carrier called Natoma Bay. I read the history of the ship. Andrea came in, I said, you're not going to believe this. I said, but the Natoma was a real ship. It was an aircraft carrier, fought in World War II in the Pacific against the Japanese. And that lit a fuse in me. I, I still didn't believe in past lives, but I said, however this happened or whatever it was, I was going to find out. I was really affected by Bruce. This is somebody who was presented with a profound mystery and one that was hugely emotionally engaging to him because we're talking about his own son. But shortly after that, James started to draw and he had a common theme. It was airplanes shooting at other airplanes or getting shot down. This is one of the first drawings where he signed it, James III. He said, well, he said, I'm the third James. And, you know, what? Bruce was so determined to get answers, he traveled across the country to attend a reunion of the pilots who served aboard the Natoma Bay during World War II. When I went to the Natoma Bay reunion in 2002, there were histories, there were documents that I could look at. Well, he called from the reunion, and he said, I found this record, and there was only one pilot from the squadron killed at Iwo Jima, and it was James M. Houston, Jr. And I'm like, Th that's it, that's it. That would make our James, James III. It was James McCready Houston was the father, then James McCready Houston, Jr. And then our son is James III. I have to say that after talking to them and exploring the chronology of the way that they've made these discoveries, it seems to me that their story is, is very compelling.